In this video, we enable multi-factor authentication for guest users in Azure AD. Hello everyone, I'm Travis and this is Seraltos. In this video, we're going over how to protect guest user access in Azure AD with multi-factor authentication. Before that, please take a second to like, subscribe, share, and click the bell icon for notifications of new content. If you'd like to learn about Azure Virtual Desktop, check out my course, Zero to Hero with Azure Virtual Desktop on Udemy.com. The link is below. Back to it, not every user that logs into an Azure AD tenant has to have an account on that tenant. This is because Azure AD splits authentication and authorization, allowing users to bring their own identities. Authenticating to identity services like Google, Facebook, or another Azure AD tenant, for example. This type of external guest access is referred to as business to business or B2B collaboration. We can invite an external user to our Azure AD tenant, allowing them to authenticate through a different identity provider and then give them rights and roles within our tenant. This may raise a red flag with security. After all, we're handing off a big part of identity management to an external service. Let's say an organization hires a company to do development work and they need access to Azure DevOps. You have two options to give them access. First, you can create new user accounts for developers and provide them with new login information in the tenant, or you can invite the developers to join the company with B2B collaboration as guest accounts. Now let's say one of the developers leaves the partner company. That company disables their account. The company may not let you know right away that the person's left. In the first scenario, that user still has access to their credentials in the organization's tenant. In the second scenario with a guest account, the user can't log into their tenant because the company's disabled the account, blocking access to your tenant as well. My point is having another identity provider handle authentication isn't necessarily bad. The guest account becomes an object you can add to groups and roles just like any other user account. Now that we know what it is and a general idea of how it works, let's say we have a company policy that requires multi-factor authentication or MFA for users when logging into specific applications. We invite an external user where authentication is handled by an external identity provider. How do we know that the partner identity provider has the same MFA requirements in place? Well, we don't, but that's okay. It's okay because we can enforce MFA on guest user accounts in the local tenant with conditional access policies. This way we know that the guest users are complying with the organization's MFA policy even when they're authenticated outside of our directory. Conditional access policies require Azure AD Premium P1 or P2 licensing, but that doesn't mean you need to purchase premium AD licenses for all your external users. Azure AD has a different billing model for external identities. It's measured by monthly active users or MAUs. This is a measure of unique user authentications within a calendar month. I'll leave details in the comments below, but at a high level, the first 50,000 MAUs a month is free. I will point out that there is a three cent flat fee for each SMS or text MFA attempt. If that's a problem, you may want to disable SMS based authentication. Also, the demo coming up assumes security defaults are disabled. With that, let's move on to the lab and set up a conditional access policy to enforce MFA on guest user accounts. We'll get started in the Azure AD portal. Let's first look at how to disable SMS if you're so inclined. Go to Users and Per User MFA. Under the Multi-Factor Authentication heading, go to Service Settings. Verification options are located on the bottom. This is for all users, so keep that in mind if SMS is already in use. We can disable it by unchecking text message to phone. For this example, I'll leave it checked, but if you do uncheck it, make sure to hit save. And then we can exit out. Let's go back to the Azure AD portal. Before we move on, let's test guest access as it is right now. We'll go back to users and new guest user. From here, we can send an invite to our guest user. I'll give it a name. I'll call this one Travis Outlook. So I can keep it straight with my other Travis accounts. 
I'll add the email address. This is an outlook.com email address. And I'll add a first and last name. If we scroll down, we can include a personal message. We can add them to groups or assign them roles, as well as other settings. Let's leave that blank and invite the user. The user has been invited. From here, I'll open up that email account and we can see the invitation. And here it is. This is the Outlook.com user account or our guest user. From here, I'll accept the invitation. The guest user will have to accept the permissions. And here we are logged into myapplications.microsoft.com. We can view the directory we're logged into. Seraltos.com is highlighted. That's our current directory. The user has no applications. That's fine. We just want to see the login experience and verify that the user has no MFA requirements to log into our Azure AD tenant. And they don't. So let's fix that. We're going to go back to the Azure AD portal. From there, we'll go to security, conditional access. And from conditional access, we're going to create a new policy. We'll give it a name, guest MFA for this example. Go to select users and groups. There are a couple options here. All users is just that. All users in the organization, including guest users. We can also narrow it down by going to select users and groups. From here, we'll select all guests and external users. So this policy will only apply to our guests and external users. But I do want to point out before we move on, you could enable guest and external users on an existing policy or simply select all users. Obviously the name of the policy should be changed if you do that, but it may be beneficial to create more targeted policies so they can be modified later on without impacting a wide range of users. Also, if you select all users, you should also add a break glass account to the exclusion list. A break glass account is an account used to log in and manage Azure AD if MFA breaks. And yes, this has happened in the past. You may also need to add your Azure AD Connect Sync account to the exclusion list. The Azure AD Connect Sync application can't authenticate with MFA, and it needs access to the tenant to synchronize changes. Let's move on to cloud apps. From here, we'll select all cloud apps, and it gives us a warning about not locking ourselves out. That's important but this policy will only apply to those external accounts. Go to conditions. We won't add conditions, but they're here if needed. And then go to grant. Select require multi-factor authentication. This will enforce MFA. The policy now states all external users accessing any cloud app will get access once the requirements of MFA is met. We'll select. On the bottom, we can set it to report only. This is a good option if you want to evaluate the policy before you enforce it. Let's turn it on though for this example. And we'll click create. Now the policy is enabled. Let's open up a incognito or in private window and log in as that external user. The private windows just so our credentials don't conflict between the two sessions. From here, we'll go to myapplications.microsoft.com. And then we'll sign in as the external user. And we don't need to stay signed in. Now it's directed us to a page where it needs more information. This is gonna onboard the user for MFA. Also, I can tell that this is the directory we added the guest user to because of the background. We'll go to next. And this is the interface the user will get to onboard with MFA. So from here, we'll go next. 
We'll follow along with the Authenticator app. We'll add a worker school account and use the scan QR code. Click next. The Authenticator app will prompt to approve. So we'll click approve and go to next and we're done. And if we go to organizations, we can see we're in the seraltos.com tenant. Now we're logged into my apps with MFA. Now the external account is required to use MFA in order to log into our tenant. I hope that helps you better understand how to enforce MFA on external guest user accounts. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and thanks for watching.